Okay, folks, today we have a doozy. This is uh, straight from Poland. Archon Studios has sent me the latest pledge for Dungeons and Lasers. Hello, Time Out. This is Sean Peck from about a week into the future, and I wanted to let you know I have painted this box set, and uh, it is pretty cool. There's going to be a little mini painted review right at the end of this video. So if you want to skip to it, you can, or if you'd like to watch the unboxing and then fall into it naturally, you can. But I wanted to let you know that I have tagged on a painted review for this at the end of the video. We're gonna pull this amazing pledge out of the box and take a look at it uh, right now. And here we go as we open up the box. Uh, this is all the stuff that came inside. I basically, uh, this is a terrain set, more or less. It's a set of terrain pieces that also includes their stretch goal boxes, which is kind of a, a lot of miscellaneous uh, characters and monsters and little scattered terrain and stuff like that. Uh, so that's that's how it shipped. Uh, it got here nice and, nice and safe, but none of the boxes look damaged or anything. We're going to pull it out of this so it's a little bit easier to uh, maneuver and open it up and take a look. So this is primarily terrain sets and I played, at one point, I played a lot of skirmish games and I've been sort of, I've been wanting to get back into that. I'm really into a game called Pulp Alley. Pulp Alley is a skirmish game that you can make out of, uh, it, it's a very, very versatile skirmish game where you can take just about any set of miniatures and and, uh, and apply the rules to it and make your own flavor of a, of a skirmish war game. I won't get into the minutiae of that particular game, but, but I did get this stuff to have a more versatile, uh, more versatile way to play that game. And because I love building terrain. Uh, but this isn't just terrain. In fact, there's one really really huge monster in here so I can't wait to show you guys. And, and basically what these sets are, are they're, they're sets of scattered terrain set around a particular theme. Like I got the Elven Woods which comes with about six crazy looking trees and, uh, and a whole bunch of mountains and stuff and we're going to actually open this and look at it here in a second. And I also got, these are the extras, I also got uh, Land of the Giants, which is a, a bunch of ruins that are in the theme of, of giants. We've got little giants like holding up pillars and stuff like that. So uh, the Stretch Goals box, terrain and miniatures set. So their Stretch Goals box has just like a ton. A, literally just so many uh, different little random things. That'll be interesting to go through. And they have another uh, another stretch goals box, which I'm pretty excited about. This has a giant, like a lady giant, and uh, some entrances and some uh, like a looks like a merchant's cart and some sort of ghost tree and stuff like that. We'll be looking at that in a second. And we have this. This is a uh, you got one of these, I believe, with every basic pledge. And it's the uh, what do you, how do you pronounce this? It looks like it's also got a little goblin hut and a young dragon inside of this too. So that'll be interesting to see. It's it looks the scale of it looks really large. Uh, the other thing that came was this. I, I wasn't expecting this one. It's uh it's like some tree people, <laughs> a little sprue of a uh, uh, tree folks. The Delasar sample pack. I don't remember that from the crowdfunding campaign. I believe this was this was on GameFound. I think this was. Probably one of the first things I backed on GameFound. I'm not. I'm not positive. Might have, maybe Damask was the first one, or maybe it was the Castles one. I'm not sure. But this was another GameFound project, so I was excited to get it. All right, where to start? I think I'll start with. Uh, I'll just start right here, and we'll work our way down. So, so on the campaign for this, they had an option for a mat for these different terrain pieces. I believe it was like another $30. But they had this uh, hex to them, or they had like they had a grid, a little one-inch square grid, which is great for Dungeons and & Dragons and stuff, but I don't really need that for most of the games that I play, so I kind of opted out of that. Plus, I have mats and stuff that kind of go along with it. What I really wanted was these hard plastic kits, 
that's something that I really missed about um, about some of the the terrain pieces and stuff that I build today. Like the 3D printed stuff has, has come a long, long way, but it's still not as cool to me as these uh, these these little hard plastic kits. I really miss just building a nice plastic kit at a la Games Workshop. And boy, I gotta say the detail on this is really, really good. So we got a tree here. Maybe I can zoom in a little bit more. Looks like we've got a tree sprue. And I believe we've got three of these and they're really crazy looking. They're really, uh, really neat looking trees. And we've got what looks like a little hut and some sleeping bags and stuff. And it's a nice hard plastic. The detail looks really, really, uh, really well done. These should paint up really nice. More trees. I believe this is a different type of tree. Wow, the, the detail on the wood and stuff for this is... The detail on the wood and stuff for this is really nice. Really, really appreciating that. And we got two more of that same tree. So we got six trees. And we got how many of these? One, two. Yeah, we got three sprues of these hills. Now these hills you can stack up on top of each other or, uh, or you can lay them out as separate things. They've got little, uh, lots of detail baked into them, like, like plant life and stuff like this. Uh, yeah, sort of an elven wood, so sort of a magical uh, utopian woodland scene. That'll be fun to paint. And pretty easy, like the detail's nice and nice and thick on here. The, the construction of this plastic is really nice and thick, like it's very sturdy. This really reminds me of sort of old school games workshop kits. Looks like I'll be building model kits for the next few weeks. Which is fun. I don't really like the building part as much as maybe I should. Let's do the... Let's do the Land of the Giants. Welcome to Giant Land. This seems like it would be really versatile. And for Pulp Alley, what, I, what I've been looking for is I've been trying to get terrain that kind of represents all these different exotic locales and stuff like that and a bunch of different types of scenarios. And this really seemed to fit the bill for, uh, for an exciting place to visit. And it's all ruins. You got big pillars and stuff that have fallen down. Big giant skulls and stuff. Like here's a skull with a skull inside of it. Yeah, it's kind of hard to see, but that's a really, what a crazy thing to see like right off the bat there. And this is uh, the same sprue. And this is a different sprue. Oh yeah. These are the pillars. Looks like it's it's kind of mostly pillars. Oh, I love it though. It looks so neat. Very very. Uh, yeah, it reminds me of the uh, sort of like Greek statues and stuff, like what you might see in their architecture. Very cool looking. And the in the stretch goals, it did come with one giant, so it could have a giant that you'd meet in this place. For tea. <laughs> Big giant hand. This guy kind of looks like Atlas holding up the world. What do we got here? These are all the same. More pillars. Pillars and pillars and pillars and pillars and pillars. So that one was way cool also. Again, it's more or less scattered terrain, but uh, really for the price, and I'll put a link down below to the original, to the original campaign and stuff, and you'll see that the amount of stuff you get for the price is like, 
as well it's a bargain compared to anything games workshop makes that's for certain okay so weirdly enough i was almost the most excited for for this thing so we're gonna break this guy open this however you pronounce this this word here I saw, um, so when this campaign was live, I think it was, I was looking at the King of Averages page, or his YouTube channel, when I, uh, when he mentioned this campaign, and that's the reason I picked it up. He's got a great, his opinions are really, really pretty spot on, like, I, I, he's, he's identified a number of things that would have been issues for me. Uh, with campaigns, but also, uh, you know, the positive things that he likes and stuff I tend to like as well. Wow, this is, this is really big. Oh man, that's the tail. <laughs> that's really large. It comes with like a baby dragon too, and that, even the baby dragon looks kind of big. in some kind of goblin hut. Oh man, that's like the, that's his horns for his head. Huge, huge goblin hut. <laughs> Love it. Oh yeah. There's this little rocky thing. He's like standing on a fountain or something like that. Oh wow. His big old legs. Yeah, that is crazy. Crazy looking. That's gonna be huge. I'll probably break this thing open first and start uh, start painting it. I was looking for his face. Where's his face? I saw the top of his head. I wonder if it's on this. I've got one last sprue here. But this is more the, the baby dragon, which is you know, fairly large. <laughs> yeah, the face looks a little derpy, like maybe it's a little baby one. That's, that's pretty cool, though. Nice. Really, really great. Oh, yeah, so there's the side of his face. Looks pretty angry. He's got his mouth all open. There's the other side. Okay. Yeah, he's going to be fairly large. Okay. How cool. So I went to this thing and I was like, ah, that terrain's really neat, but, you know, I can make terrain and stuff, so I don't, I don't know if I, if I want it. And it's like, every time you... With your bid, you also get uh, one of these. So you pick out two of the of the location sets and you get this. And then these other two boxes, well, three boxes, are just extra on top of it. So uh, really for the money, it's not bad. The other thing that they had on offer was a swamp. And they had a, uh, they had a swamp and they had another box that was just all monsters. Just all kinds of uh, cool looking creatures and stuff. All right, well, let's do this little box. Now this is one I don't remember from the campaign and it was kind of just put in on top and it doesn't say anything about Kickstarter extras or anything like that. Uh, look to be some sort of tree people of some sort. World of Dulaslar. Oh, one thing I've set, I've noticed in all these is there's no instructions so far. <laughs> uh, I think I saw on the side of the box it said for instructions, go ahead and read, um, you know, look it up online. Apparently, so apparently you can get it online. Oh, okay. These are uh, RPG characters for some uh, RPG thing that they're working on. Not sure if this is an upcoming campaign. My guess is. This will probably be one of their next crowdfunding campaigns, or maybe it's one that they've got going already that I just don't know about because I'm kind of new to the Archon Studios and, uh, and the stuff that they do. 
Looks like some really interesting sort of uh, very tree themed, at least some of them look like they're made of a little tree people kind of faction of some sort. The detail is great. Very deep. I like it. I like it a lot. I'll put this back in the box and maybe I'll paint it one day. <laughs> we shall see. So of you folks that found this video and you're here watching it, do you play Dungeons and Dragons? Uh, did you buy this set? Are you looking to get it later? Because these are easy to get after they've been released too. I noticed you, uh, especially during this campaign, I could buy stuff from previous campaigns too. So I imagine you, there's not like a limitation on what you can get. There's no, you can buy these in, in retail also. You don't have to back them in the campaigns. They might be a little cheaper. Might be a better deal. I don't know. So this is box one of two of the super stretch goals. All right. What do we have here? We have sort of a horse and carriage. Let's do like this. Yeah. All right. So here we have a horse and carriage. Oh, that horse looks like it's a, a good good proportion. Sometimes they get the horse wrong. A lot of times they get the animal's proportions wrong. Uh, yeah, it looks like a like some sort of merchant cart, which is cool. I actually have a, a couple of different like little scenarios where merchant carts would work out really well. And I've got I've got another one that I built. So that could blend in right there with the others. Uh, we've got it looks like a tree of some sort. Oh, there's a face in it. It's like a tree person. Wow, it's almost like there's a mermaid kind of embedded into this tree. It's really, it's pretty neat. And we've got, it looks like a little, uh, like a little watchtower. And another little building of some sort. It almost looks like a Viking building or something like that. A door. These are more parts of that same tower and building. And yet more parts of that same tower and building. These are fairly large pieces. And I'm guessing this is the last of those pieces. <laughs> We've got a tower building and one of those cages. Uh, that looks like one of those cages Mad Mardigan was put in in, the, in Willow. And we have this tree, and it, this is like some sort of ghost tree, and it's like a little trans, it's a translucent plastic, and it looks really, really neat. Oh, there's like a little face in the tree and stuff too. I like it. And here we have the giant, and she is, you know, she's fairly hot for a giant. <laughs> we have a really uh, good looking giant. With uh, big long legs. And yeah, it looks like she's got some crazy armor and stuff. Wow, what a cool character. This will be a lot of fun to paint. Wow, and the scale of it. It's, uh, it's pretty large. That's her body there. Leg to the head. Yeah, there's a little zombie side Rick Sanchez next to the giant. So you can see uh, kind of the scale with that 28 millimeter. <laughs> for a 28 millimeter miniature. So she is truly going to be a giant. And she will look excellent in my display case, which is what I'm hoping to do with some of these things. Oh, and what else we have here? One more sprue. Oh, and we've got like an entrance. This looks like an entrance to uh, like a Dwarven Forge or something like that. Big rocky entrance. Very neat. It's going to be hard to decide what I want to build for. I think I'm probably going to just sit and build things. I'll probably spend about two weeks just assembling this and then I'll start to paint it. Leave a comment down below if you want to see uh, see the paint jobs when I'm done or, or just follow me on Instagram because I will for sure be posting them there. One last box. One last box to go. This box has a lot of little things so it might not be that easy to see. We'll just go through it really quick and kind of take a look. I mean, this box has just a ton 
the little characters and things in it. And they're all sort of random stuff. We've got little towers, we've got uh, some monsters, a couple of, like a horse and a boat, a big spider, a lean-to of some sort, looks like a mermaid, uh, some, looks like sea monsters, a big snake around a pillar. Oh, look at that. And bases, too. I guess that's for the different characters, but wow, what not. These are really neat. Really, really neat uh, textured bases. Hopefully you can see that. I'm getting as close as I can here. Very cool textured bases. We got one, two of those. And uh, right here, we got the first sprue of random things. <laughs> this is like, this is great. So you got like a bunch of, looks like some killer plants and some mushrooms and stuff. Uh, that'll really fill in the forest area. That the, the elven forest. And this is some kind of big crab monster and some spiders. Having a mermaid over here. Oh, it looks like a couple of mermaids, maybe. Ariel. Here we have, uh, looks like a little tent, totem pole. It's almost, uh, it looks like a little shelter over here. More tentacles, a lot of tentacles in here. And we got some more of the colored plastics. We got some sort of portal, a sort of glowing, uh, a couple of different things that sort of look like little portals and some doorways with like electricity coming off of them and stuff. Ah, pretty neat. Here we have a sprue with a lot of little characters on it, a little frog man, uh, something, a pig. I see part of a pig. I see uh, a lady with some snakes, uh, maybe a harpy. It looks like a, maybe a harpy on here. Uh, a lot of monsters. We got like a something that looks like a basculus and a harpy. Is it the same? Yeah, there's more on that side. Okay, so maybe it's like a couple of different. And some frog, like a frog monster or something. I'm not sure what's up with this pig. I don't see the rest of them. I just see like part of them. I don't know, maybe he's like laying down and something's coming out of him. Oof, that's weird. <laughs> and right here we've got a boat. Some more fauna. Big spider. Rock. Oh no, a rock. A head. Looks like some sort of a sorceress or something. Uh, it like, looks like she's coming out of the... Might be the lady in the lake with the sword and stuff. And here we have, ooh, looks like another giant or something. Some big thing holding a leg. Yeah, it's definitely fairly large if we put them up to Rick, Rick scale here. And, oh, and the, I bet that's the front of him. It looks like an ogre, perhaps. Oh, and it looks like maybe there's a couple of them. Sorry, I'm not sure where that got cut off, so. I was just saying about this sprue is boy, it's uh, it's really got a bunch of sort of random things uh, in this Kickstarter extras box. I could see where maybe you'd assemble a bunch of this stuff and kind of put it aside and uh, and kind of have it in the back of your head. So if you're doing a if you're dungeon master and you're doing encounters, you'd be like, oh yeah, I've got a I've got like a little crane thing. <laughs> maybe I'll implement that in my next scenario. And paint it up slowly as you go. Yeah, this one has got uh, well, more scattered terrain, a lot of different things. We've got, a, like, it looks like a wooden cross with some crows and stuff hanging out on there. Uh, some sort of crane device. Interesting. 
And here it looks like we've got uh, more little temples, little temple areas and some um, and some stuff like that. This looks like a uh, this looks like an altar of some sort that you would build. Wow, a lot of uh, sort of objective oriented little things. Yeah, I am uh, I am super excited to to dig into this stuff and build it. Don't be misunderstood either. Like when I buy something like this, I, my intent is to paint it. So I'm looking at a lot of work. Like even just putting these things together is going to take forever. It's going to take so long. And how much of it do I build? And why would I build it? You know, do I really need to build all this stuff? I certainly have a lot of projects already from games that are coming in and games that I have ambitions about finishing up and stuff. So. But I will at least, at the very least, I'm going to build the terrain. And I'm going to build uh, this big monster guy. And, uh, and possibly just like any, I'll probably pick out a number of other little things that I think are, are a lot of fun. And I'll start putting those together and painting them. Hey folks, as promised, here's a little mini painted review for just one of the box sets. Now, I thought it would be fun as, as an example to break up one of these and kind of get into building model kits again. I actually haven't really built a lot of model kits lately. I've been playing a lot of these board games and they all come pre-assembled and stuff. And sometimes it's actually harder to paint that way. But uh, I am from the Games Workshop world. I, I used, I'm accustomed to building my models and assembling them and stuff. So the big guy here was the first thing that I built. I was really, really excited to get a, a big monster. I'm a huge fan of kaijus and big monsters and stuff. And I did have a lot of gaps that I had to fill in with green stuff, but that's, I guess, kind of normal. Uh, I mostly went for the ones that are the most annoying, uh, most visible and stuff to me. But I did uh, I did a lot of work, prep work on this one before I actually uh, primed it. I used a mix of contrast and speed paints to paint this guy. Uh, I did Rattling Grime is the top darker part and uh, a dunes color or some sand color from the speed paint is what I used for the, uh, the bottom of the creature. Everything else is pretty pedestrian. We got some uh, bone colors and some medium gray colors and, and uh, I did a little bit of a wash on the base to kind of make it look a little bit more grimy and like it was uh, recently made into rubble. Painting this guy was a lot quicker than assembling it with the speed paint. As with all of my paint jobs, it's not the best. It's definitely not the worst, but it is finished. And I'm pretty happy with it, pretty happy with it overall. I do think traditional techniques work better than the speed painting techniques and stuff. And even without the slap chop style underbrush, which I find to be a little bit dark and dirty, uh, this one came together and ended up looking pretty nice. I'm perfectly happy to go ahead and uh, call it done and maybe pull it out for some crazy adventure. This kit also came with like two, I would say, medium-sized models. We've got a young dragon, like a baby dragon here. And uh, he went together really, really well. I, I think he went together a lot better than the last model. Reasonably happy with him. Uh, a lot of good details, a lot of... Uh, it's nice working with a good hard plastic. Uh, I really love the plastics that they used for these. But he went together really well. Only had maybe one gap that was really apparent to fill with him. And uh, he painted up really well too. And the last piece that I have is this uh, goblin hut. It's sort of a mushroom goblin hut. I did assemble it to the point where it could be removed from the base so I could paint inside the hut and stuff also. This one has some fairly huge gaps, but the irregularities of, the, of it being a mushroom cap uh, made it pretty easy to hide the green stuff. But I did have a lot of green stuff on this one too to kind of hide the seams. Some of this might be just me being kind of rusty at building model kits, uh, uh, but I don't think so. I think, <laughs> I think you ended up with like a lot of gaps, but that's kind of the way it is always on models. They have to fit together some way or another. So uh, I thought they did a, a little bit better job with this one, try to hide 
like the areas where it would go but even so there was some areas where it was pretty obvious like on his paw and stuff i had a great time building and painting these models and i i'm really looking forward to the next i think that i'm going to do another what's funny is i bought this kind of for the terrain but i'm more excited about all the extra stuff that it came with i think the next thing i'm going to do is the giant and uh the sexy giant and uh and the little cart and stuff so i'm i'm excited to pull all that together i guess the big thing now is i've got to figure out where i'm going to store all these things uh, i've suddenly got a whole lot more models uh to put away the terrain i've got places for but things like this i'm like i don't know what to do with it so uh in the short term it's going to be at the very top of my display cabinet and maybe i'll just kind of add little pieces as I go. Anyway, that's all for the review. I'm impressed. They're cool model kits. Maybe not the best I've ever assembled, but very, very good. And I, I'm, I'm extremely happy with the results of uh, these extra components that weren't even part of the main kit. I have a feeling that the terrain part is going to be uh, even more fun, and I'm really excited to get that together, painted, and implemented into some of my games. Tune in and subscribe if you'd like more of these. And if you want to see the other things that I paint, if you are interested in that content, please comment and let me know. Otherwise, I'm not going to know for sure if that's the kind of thing I should post on. This is sort of a new channel. It's about four years old, but if you'll notice in the past few weeks, I've been kind of grinding out uh, as much content as possible. And I'm really, really curious to know what kinds of things you guys are interested in. So just let me know. Follow me on Instagram, Pet Tech Games. I'm there and I talk about board games. I show pictures of what I'm working on. Sometimes you get a little preview of what's going to come on the channel and stuff like that. But yeah, that's the quickest way to see what painted projects, uh, as far as if you're interested in the painted side of what I do, uh, that's the quickest way to see what I'm working on currently. That's all I got for today, though, folks. Do you like skirmish games? Do you play this sort of thing? Let me know. Uh, I'd like to know in the comments down below. I've been thinking, of, I'm going to start pulling Owen in. Uh, to some skirmish games. Hopefully he'll play some with me and I, I, I'm going to build lots of cool terrain and make it lots of fun and I'll be sharing that with all of you as well. Until then, enjoy your games and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.